Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's ICU, and today, following Apple's annual Worldwide Developers Conference, aka WWDC for short, the company pushed out the first iOS 14 beta to register developers. Now, if you're interested in installing it right now, we did a video on that. It's in your cards now, as well as down below in the description. Also, if you don't want to miss out anytime we cover things related to iOS 14, be sure to subscribe and ding that notification bell. Now, with that out of the way, let's just delve straight into this. In today's video, we're focused on a very specific set of features that iOS 14 brings to the table, arguably the cornerstone features of iOS 14. As many of you who watched Apple's keynote will know, Apple has introduced widgets to iOS 14. So now when we enter the wiggle mode on the home screen here to edit your home screen layout, we have a few different changes. Most notably, you'll see up here in the left-hand corner, we have this plus. We also have minus on our applications, and we have this little pill shape down here right above the dock with page dots. Let's start up top first. So tapping the plus, whoops, let's go ahead and try that again. We're going to edit home screen, and again, tapping the plus will now bring up widgets. It's a new kind of pane. It is not transparent, but you can see that it does add an element of depth by showing you your home screen right above it. Currently, the selection of widgets is limited to what Apple provides. Potentially in the future, at some point, probably beyond iOS 14's public release later this fall, they could open up the API to developers, which would allow developers to add widgets for their own applications. That would be super cool. Right at the forefront of the widgets page here, we have Smart Stack. Now, this is one that Apple demoed on stage. It utilizes machine learning to intelligently suggest different widgets to you based on the time of day. So it's dynamic and it does change. And here is the current selection of widgets available. So you can see it is locked down to some of the default applications. We have weather, tips, stocks, series suggestions, shortcuts, reminders, podcasts, photos, notes, news, maps, calendar, batteries, and of course that smart stack. So it shows you up above that list kind of what it would look like. And I believe that these are recommendations that it makes to you based Based on what it thinks you like utilizing machine learning. And the majority of widgets that are available, for instance, maps, news, and weather, when you tap on them, they actually do open up the corresponding application as well. So let's go ahead and tap on Smart Stack, and you can see the ad screen then pops up again into another layer. And uh, it just is a really nice effect, in my opinion, from a visual perspective. And it says that it automatically rotates widgets to show the most relevant information through throughout the day and can also be flipped through easily. And you do have two different styles. You have a more compact view here and you have a more dramatic landscape view here. So let's go ahead and add that to our home screen. And as you can see, it just plops right on there and it makes room by moving the other applications. And uh, it looks nice, honestly. And there is some gravity to it as well when it does add that there. And as you can see, it's already flipping through this. I did not do that. It just did it on its own. It knows that I saw that weather right there. And now it's trying to recommend the Siri suggestion on this day, probably from the photos application, but I don't have anything in there on this device and as you can see we can just easily and conveniently flip through these and it will start to learn your habits as well but if we go ahead and tap on it what we can do is we can actually edit this specific stack as well and we can even remove certain segments of it but just going into edit right here we have the option to toggle off smart rotate which i detailed previously if for whatever reason you don't want it and then you can of course manually reorder it as well so as you can see i moved maps up to the top now so we can go ahead and go back just by swiping down and maps should appear right at the top. Now, what's also really cool is if we didn't want maps, we can just tap on it right there and we could tap remove maps and then we tap on remove to the pop up there and now it's gone from that specific stack. So how does it handle actually rearranging the home screen? So let's go ahead and tap and hold and then tap on the edit home screen and let's just start to move it. Like I said, there is a gravity to it and it looks really nice, honestly. You can see we can put it in the middle if we want. I like the way that looks, to be perfectly frank, but if we really wanted to, we could also move it to the bottom. Um, let's go ahead and go back to edit the home screen here. And now let's just move it straight to the bottom. And there you go. Um, we can also, of course, remove it. 
and it moves our applications back. You can see they just slide over like so. And now let's go ahead and hit plus again. And I wanna show you guys what it looks like if we have a more compact view. All widgets really seem to maintain one of these three layouts. You can see if we go into calendars, we do get an extra option there, one that is more expanded. So let's go ahead and tap on that followed by add widget. And now you can see we only have two rows of icons there. For now, it doesn't appear as though you can actually change it to a more condensed view, but you do have options if you enter your edit mode and you can tap on it like so. But uh, if we wanted to change it out to one of the other views, we would just simply remove it and then we could add it again. And that's basically widgets in a nutshell. I'm going to add another one just to give you guys some variety. And so you can see what it looks like when we add something like batteries, for instance. And as I mentioned, again, we have these three different options for the widget. So now this time, let's go ahead and add on the small compact widget. And like I said, it just plops it right there on your home screen and you can reorganize it. This one is just a two by two layout. So basically the only requirement is that you need to put it in a spot where typically four icons would be situated. Now, um, one last thing before we really conclude is that if you wanted to, you could just go crazy and you could add all sorts of stacks or widgets on your home screen. So let's go ahead and add a uh, maps widget now and let's just expand it so we can take up the most real estate there so like i said if you wanted to go crazy you can have just widgets and we'll talk about that in just a second because next when we tap and we tap on edit home screen like i mentioned you have something extra now you have a little minus to the left of the icon and you can just delete it so you can see that we can literally and truly delete any system application now. It is not just limited to the select few that Apple allows. We can fully and completely delete it, or if we wanted to, we could just tap on add to library and then it just removes it from the home screen, but it saves it somewhere else that we're going to get into in just a second. But that is a really, really nice and welcomed addition as well. Now moving right along to the final new element when we enter the wiggle mode, that little pill shape down below at the bottom. When we tap on it, like so, it brings you an overview of all current and open pages. So now, you can see we can quickly jump between the pages. If you have a large number of applications installed, that becomes very helpful. But what's really cool is you can actually turn pages on and off. So you can actually hide entire pages. And if you really wanted to, you could get rid of all of your app pages entirely by adding widgets on one page. The only requirement is that you do need one page. You absolutely do. But you can see when we go over and we swipe, um, it just moves it to our app library. So we now no longer have any sort of app pages. And let me go ahead and remove this as well to show you guys that, uh, yeah, see that check mark is there and it kind of grays out the ability to uncheck it. And now we just truly do have one widgets page there. I thought I didn't have that single battery widget page previously. Uh, so that kind of threw me off. But as you can see, when we swipe over now, we are just now in the app library, which brings us to our final segment in today's video the app library. Now you might be wondering, how do you get to this and does it replace the default search ability? No, it doesn't replace the default search, but you can tap up in the top where it says app library and it will bring up a search field to allow you to search through your installed applications. And they're also in alphabetical order there as well. But essentially you just get to it by scrolling to the last page on your device's home screen. And it appears as though it's only the second page here on this layout because we disabled all of our other pages, but really it's just the last Last page and that's the only way right now to really access your app library again this also uses machine learning and what it does is it groups your applications so you would typically have a recently installed group as well but I do not have any applications installed on this device other than just the stock and default so you can see that it puts things into suggestions so what it thinks you might like to use are right here and there you go you can just tap on the individual icons you can't really get it to expand as you can see if you try to tap and hold it just really 
targets one of those app icons, whichever one your finger's over, but it does group them. Um, really the only way, I guess, to get it to expand is to scroll to one that has multiple icons in one spot right there. You can see that single icon spot is split up into four under the references and reading section, whereas if we just wanted to go into the brand new Translate app, it just immediately does that when you tap on it. So guys, that is the new home screen on iOS 14. What do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comments section. And uh, really quick, just to conclude, if we go to edit the home screen and we tap on the little pill shape right there, we can re-enable our pages as well. They actually don't go anywhere unless you delete the applications from your device. But even if you do, then you can re-download stock apps from the app store. So yep, that's it. That's everything I want to talk about in today's video for iOS 14, the new redesign for the home screen, widgets, app library, and everything else. And until next time, this is ICU signing out. Yeah.